Alright guys, I'm going to uh, show how I set up my own cloud, like my uh, just my general network layout for my own cloud system, and also um, how I recommend you set it up if you have a free NAS box and that's how you want to do it. I don't like set it up exactly like this, but a lot of the steps are very similar because I have my setup on uh, FreeBSD. Actually, let me just show my setup. I drew a picture for it, and um, here it is. I just scanned it. So I don't know if you can read it very well, but yeah, basically these are clients. Um, uh, this is, they have an HTTPS connection to my PFSense box. On there I'm running HAProxy. Um, and I, over this I'll go over how I make this whole system high performance. First of all, high, high, HAProxy is pretty high performance for doing SSL. Um, um, pretty much anything is as long as you're using AES-NI, and this is what I'm going to be using in my new um, PF, PF Sense box that I'm building right now. The, my current one actually that I'm running on doesn't have it, so things the encryption process for the HTTPS connection might actually be faster in the future. Um, and then I push that over to Varnish. Uh, this just does um, static file caching. It also does, um, if you configure it correctly, um, how I have it configured, it does um, gzipping, which is a type of compression for files uh, that can be gzipped. So it obviously it would ignore like JPEGs, which are already compressed, but like um, text files or HTML files or CSS, it will auto compress those files um, on the fly and it will send it to the client and tell them it's compressed. And it actually works really well. Um, Varnish 4, which I don't isn't on PFSense yet. I don't even know if it's on FreeBSD yet, but Varnish 4 has even better um, compression, like in terms of it being smart. It just, I think it auto does it. Like it, it knows ahead of time, like this should be compressed. But for me, I had to set it up in the config to say always compress the objects if, if there's certain kinds of files. And um, yeah, it worked really well. So um, then that does an HTTP connection to my uh, web server. This is running Free, FreeBSD 10. Um, on there, I have Nginx. That actually connects to multiple different jails um, running different applications. So each application has its own PHP-FPM process. Um, but this one, I'm in this video, I'm just talking about my own cloud instance. So I have an own cloud. I don't know if you can read this. Let me see. There you go. Much better. Um, I have an own cloud instance, so it's running a PHP in there. And um, so this Nginx can see the same files that this can see, which are mounted um, from an another data set. This is all in ZFS uh, on two SSDs. But basically, my PHP uh, it connects to this through a socket because um, the the host system can see the socket inside of the jail. So I just set it up to pass it to there. It works really well. Um, PHP. These are the. This is one of the biggest things you can do is set up opcache. I actually have PHP 5.5, which um, it's like a built-in part of it. It's not even. In, it's not even like a separate extension you need. So as long as you pretty much have a standard PHP 5.5 setup, you'll have opcache installed, which does uh, makes a huge difference in the speed of PHP processing um, because it it keeps scripts in memory so that um, if the script hasn't changed, it just runs it from memory instead of always taking the script from text, converting that to bytecode that PHP can de then read. I mean that um, your system can then run. It, it just keeps the bytecode in cache, in a memory cache. APC um, this is actually APCU, which is used to do that, the upcaching, and it does um, it does like user caching of files. Um, it does both. Uh, APCU only does the user portion of it um, because in 5.5, upcache is better and it's built into the system. So this actually is slightly higher performance, so that's why, but you still need APCU because OwnCloud will um, take advantage of that to store, um, to like cache user stuff in there. So this is nice for caching stuff. It's kind of like a pre-database cache. Um, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, it's kind of like pre-database cache. Instead of going to the database, PHP has a separate cache to do stuff that it could look up, but then it knows that it doesn't need to look it up. Um, it'll connect to APCU instead, that extension. Another thing you want to do is you want to enable cron, your system-wide cron, because it's much more efficient than using the web cron that own cloud can also use. Or even worse is if you set it up, if you just leave it the default, don't set this up, then own cloud won't even be able to do background processing. Um, and then every time you open a page, it has to do all those processes right then, so it slows things down. Also, you want to enable send file. Um, so all of these things actually are enabled in the guide I'll show you. So. Don't even worry about any of these things. You just follow the guide if you have free NAS. Um, send file will basically um, send files using the, it'll just push this back to the web server and let the web server send static files instead of having PHP send it. So it's actually much faster. Um, I'm not using this because I use encryption. 
so it can't um, send those files because they're encrypted. It has to go through PHP to um, decrypt them first. So it doesn't matter. They're not even on disk to be sent. So I use encryption and my um, web server overall is an i7. It has AES and I. So um, these, this encryption process does go faster than it would be if it's doing it all on the CPU. Okay, and then that obviously connects to MySQL. Um, I'm actually running MariaDB. This is all inside of jail. I have a single MySQL instance for I basically have multiple jails for applications. Like I have a PyDO one, I have a WordPress jail, I have an OwnCloud jail. Uh, in the future, I'm gonna have an, a ZoneMinder jail and an NZB jail. Those are all PHP applications, but they all talk to one database, um, which is in another jail, and that's MariaDB. I actually pass this socket to them. It's a, it's a um, MariaDB has a socket that you can listen to instead of using a, um, like, um, instead of using a, an, a TCP connection, it just uses a socket. So. In order to get those between jails, I had to do a shared mount point, but you know, don't worry about that because you're not actually going to be doing any of this if you're on free mass. Um, but I will. But all these, um, the socket, and all these things will be set up for you. So essentially, uh, it connects to the socket to send information. Um, MariaDB is sped up when you run it on SSDs just because it's a database. It has to write really small things really quickly. Um, basically, if you do want to do this though, uh, if you're not using that guide, you want to make sure you use as many MySQL ZFS tweaks you can that would work with your system. Um, that's a lot of the things I did were you doing that. If you just search ZFS tweaks, um, FreeBSD, then at the bottom they have a little MySQL section They show you everything you would need to change. And actually my storage isn't on the, the web server. My, my file store, um, which is the data directory for uh, FreeNAS, I mean for OwnCloud is actually on my FreeNAS machine where I actually have all my, like I have like 16 terabytes right now. Um, so that connects over NFS. This is actually a dedicated link. I have my FreeNAS has three links to my um, to a switch to connect to my to the PFSense, but it also has a fourth link that connects directly to my web server. My web server has three links, three uh, NICs, but um, this one actually just connects directly. All it does is NFS. It does. Uh, it also does some backups and other little things, but for the most part, it just does NFS over this link, um, and it connects to a data set on my FreeNAS and. You wanna, I actually made a video, you can just search it before about NFS and ZFS performance tweaks and you can get you know your full network connection if you have decent NICs and decent CPU. I'm getting 100 um, megabytes per second over this link, so I'm maxing out this connection. Um, yeah, and then this is just my backup system. I have an offsite, it's actually a PFSense system at my parents' house. I haven't set this completely up, but I basically have scripts to take this data set here and send it here. The reason I haven't set this up yet is because I need PFSense 2.2, which is based on FreeBSD 10 over here, in order to send and receive these data sets. Um, but yeah, that's being sent over NBuffer. But that's basically how I back things up is the files are residing on my FreeNAS and they're being backed up to an offsite thing. And then the client should have a version of the files as well. So you, you pretty much have a triple of the file. Um, but this is the safe, these two are the safe ones because they have snapshotting. So they have multiple versions and everything. So that is basically my setup. I don't recommend you do it this complicated unless you have your three machines and this is how you want to do it. Um, this is just how my setup ended up evolving because I have multiple different applications I want to run. But if you're just doing standard FreeNAS, then this is what I recommend you do. Um, if you go to the FreeNAS forums and go to how to and installation and how to own cloud using Nginx, PHP, FPM, and MySQL. This is the guide I wrote. This is just some notes. Basically, I'm saying that you, the main thing you need to take away from this first part is you need to find a way to run SSL. Either edit my guide to add SSL in or on Nginx or run Haproxy. I run Haproxy on a different machine. That's why I didn't just show how to do that here, but yeah. And then this guy basically shows all the tweaks I just showed, but running on a single machine. So it shows everything. If you follow this, you will pretty much get the same setup as me, but just on a single FreeNAS machine. And it works really well, and um, yeah, that's on Cloud 7. I recommend you follow this guide if you're FreeNAS, and um, you'll be gold, and you'll have a nice on Cloud setup going. Uh, this will have document editing, it'll have everything, um, movie previews, um, yeah, pretty much everything I showed, and it should run flawlessly. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions setting up on Cloud, then um, feel free to contact me on these forums. So yeah, I'll see you guys later.